All right, welcome back. Today I have a very cool game from classical Chinese Go or Wiki. This is a game uh, part of the 10 game match at Dongwu, which is kind of considered to be the pinnacle of classical Chinese Go. And uh, it was between Fen Chiping and Xie Xing Xia. And these games are pretty crazy, and one of the reasons that the rules were a little different. First of all, um, the board starts in this cross opening, like this was how the game would start to be played. And the other thing is that white goes first in classical Chinese Go, but the most important difference is that there's essentially a two-point penalty for every group you have on the board. And I think uh, the the way the logic was explained to me in the book that I got this game from was that since you have to make two eyes for the group to live, you shouldn't get points for the eyes. So every group you have on the board, two point penalty uh, at the end of the game. And that has some huge impacts on how the style and the fuseki and all that good stuff uh, comes out. Because if we just do a really simple 3-3 three, three invasion joseki like this, and, you know, we probably all know this or have at least seen it at some point. If this is an even result, and that's kind of, you know, what a Joseki is. is it's a, you know, it's an even result for both players. Well, if we know white's getting two fewer points of territory in the corner, this is no longer an even result. Uh, because of this group penalty, uh, white has just lost two points compared to what would be an even result. So... This is no longer a Joseki. No professional would play this sequence. Uh, or, I mean, unless it was <clears throat> in a circumstance where the less territory uh, didn't matter, you know, for some reason. Like, this could be like a special purpose move, but this would not be a Joseki. And two points might not sound like a lot, but if you're a professional, you can't just give up two points for no reason. Like, that's a, that could be the easily be the margin of victory and defeat in the game, is if you just gave up two points for no particular reason or because you made a blunder or something, that would be terrible. So, you know, yeah, if you're 15Q, you're probably not worried about, you know, a two-point difference in a Joseki shape. But if you're professional, that's a huge, huge difference. So this is no longer viable. Like, this thickness is worth more. This group is worth less. Uh, you know, black is probably going to be able to connect to other groups, which means that black will have fewer groups on the board, which means fewer penalties for the number of groups. Like, essentially, connecting all your stones whole board into one big group is, is way bigger. I mean, it's big in regular Go, just connection is a huge part of the game. But in classical Chinese Go, that would just not be viable. You would have to separate your opponent's stones to, you know, keep, from, keep that group penalty from racking up. So, with that being said, let's get into the game. And a lot of this will be fairly familiar. You know, white's gonna approach, knight's move approach. So far, we're all good. Black's pincer, though, this is definitely unorthodox, but this six-point extension from the star point is super common at the time. And, you know, it does kind of pressure this white stone. Like, if white does just ignores it and does, like, the same thing over here, we could see that, you know, even after this, white's a little crowded over here. Like, white doesn't have two eyes along the edge for sure, so this stone is putting pressure on the white position, and it also leaves room for a two-point extension. So there's... There's logic we can understand in the move. And because of the group penalty, what you'll see is that a lot of the Fuseki is just people playing all over the board trying to isolate their opponent's stones into as many small groups as possible, you know, while still being able to get a base for their own stones. So the other thing I think that is going on just because of the way... Uh, oh no, let's go back to the game. Just if we go over the next few moves... You know, these players are kind of, you know, not directly responding to each other's moves. And we can see these two stones work together to kind of isolate this corner from the rest of the board. So we can kind of see, like, these three white stones are all likely to be different groups. And that's kind of the strategy going on. And the, the other thing that you'll see, too, is that, you know, here, instead of responding directly to this move, black takes the big point. And it's kind of one of those things, like, if we, if we think that this approach is the biggest move on the board, there's one line of logic that you could argue that responding to the approach is too small. 
playing your own approach or splitting move or playing your own big point is bigger than responding to the opponent until all those points have been taken. So now we get to this point where all of the big points at this stage have been taken. And so notice that we didn't play out any any joseki. Like in, in modern Go, if somebody approaches you, typically you respond in that corner until the joseki is finished. But here, they're going to play all the big points saying essentially that nothing is urgent, there's no double approach that's urgent enough to make me not play a big point. And now we're going to start getting into the smaller moves in the local situation, but notice here that again, black doesn't immediately respond to this. The idea being, if this is the biggest move, responding to it is too small. I need to play my own big move that puts pressure on my opponent position. So we kind of see them pinwheeling around the board a little bit, <laughs> you know, play, alternatively playing these different points, and they're sort of like moving through one move in each corner or side situation at a time, and then moving on to the next one that's still just a little bigger, at least in their perspective. And, uh, you know, you can kind of see that just nobody is responding to <laughs> the, their opponent's moves. It's all just like, I'll take this, you take that, I'll take this, you take that. Uh, this black kind of, this is definitely forcing uh, black can't let white just cut this off. This would give white pretty much the entire corner. And even if black could live back here, black would make like, you know, even if black lives with four points of territory, that's only two points in these, rule, in these rules. So not good at all. Um, so here white, you can kind of see white's trying to build up, you know, influence. Black's trying to take a big corner, uh, which pretty much works. And then white turns to attack the black stone on top. It's pretty much, you know, we, we can see things are a little unsettled on the lower side. But, you know, this, this makes sense. Okay, you know, black, black had the corner first. Uh, white gave up a good sized corner uh, to get some influence and is now going to take the stone. And it wouldn't... You could, you know, maybe try to move out with this stone right away, make sure to rescue it, but that's going to just cause you a world of trouble because you're running right into this thick white position, and you just made a huge, you know, black just made a huge territory in the corner. If black, or if white makes a pretty decent territory on the top, we're, we're okay with that, you know, that's, you can't be super jealous of your opponent. Uh, black jumps out with this stone because we can see that with these two stones and the anchor in the corner and this wall, that this stone is getting really weak. Uh, and then white plays this really interesting uh, sequence on the inside, and black has to come all the way to the 2-2 to keep this from getting eye shape. Because it's one of those things, like if you ignore this move and, you know, just jump out to safety here, when white comes here, it looks like, you know, either white's going to get two eyes or white's going to get one eye, and even if you do end up managing to capture it, you're going to get squeezed on the outside, and if it ends up as a seki or something, white just destroyed all your territory in here. So, so black has to come to the 2-2, keep that from happening. And uh, the other thing that this accomplishes for white is now this move is sente. You know, if black ignores this, white can cut this off, and now basically, you know, the corner is probably all dead. Like, probably all these stones in the corner are dead. So that's not, that's not viable. So, uh, as it turns out, um, you know, white's going to have this move at P16 up his sleeve for later. And that will be important. So white comes and caps the two stones down here, just all out attacking move, which is good because, you know, these stones aren't too strong, these stones aren't very really strong, we've got the wall, we've got this well, hopefully stable group in the corner. I mean, black can still come in here and do things, but... Uh, and here we see black trying to utilize some of this cutting Aji right here, but white just comes here, and you can see now that this wedge isn't working because this is kind of devastating, and uh, at the moment this ladder isn't working. It comes down to this white stone. So, <clears throat> just something, uh, you know, it's kind of... Because let's see, this would down, 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 down. Oh, well, maybe it would work. It would come here, force white over, come here, force white down. No, white would connect to the stone. Never mind. Just making sure. You've got to read your ladders. Uh, know what kind of Aji is in the position. So this is actually really cool because this is preventing this wedge. It's pretty much preventing this cut at the moment. You know, black coming here and white doing this. This is going to be really brutal. 
Black could probably weasel out with these stones, but white's going to get really strong on the top and swallow up this stone, and white's going to come out with these and weaken these two. Not a viable position. Instead, black takes advantage of a little bit of thinness over here to try and get a little bit of, like, eye shape. This here, uh, white blocks black from the corner, but this lets black, uh, well, black peeps first, which is good. And then, uh comes here, which kind of, you know, this keeps black connected to the outside. If black doesn't play this and, uh, you know, um, say, you know, jumps into the corner or something, uh, white has this move, which, you know, doesn't kill black. But what can happen is black comes back like this, white comes here, and when white slices through this, white becomes super thick on the outside and cuts off this one stone, and Remember, black's only getting, like, two points of territory in here because of the eye penalty. So, yeah, black can, you know, come and do this in the corner. And at this point, white probably wouldn't even respond to this. I don't think it's quite big enough. Uh, white would do something on the outside, come over with this double approach or something. But, um, so, yeah, that's not, that's not playable. So white, or, I mean, black, rather, has to exchange this. Uh, to keep all connected to the outside. But this does hurt the side a little bit. Like, now... Black can't really attach here and draw back to get some eye shape over here. So it's like at most one eye in Gote right here, which, you know, makes this threat even stronger. Uh, black comes back here. White descends. Black comes out, trying to get to the outside. And, uh, you know, you can see that, you know, these white stones, they don't have very good shape. And black is coming out. And black is, you know, a little thin here. This isn't going to seal white in 100%. But it looks like... Oh, man, these white stones are, are in a little bit of hot water here. Uh, and then this is good. Uh, you don't want to <clears throat> hold on to this P5 stone. You played that as a forcing move. The exchange in and of itself was good for, for black. Much better to come out with good shape with this tiger's mouth, uh, with this side group, which is more important than the one stone anyway, than to try and rescue it now that white's cutting through. Just let it slow white down, you know? It's going to slow white down one way or the other. Uh, black cuts through here. You know, this is starting to get really complicated. White comes back up here to limit the scope of these three stones because, you know, black is eyeing this cut. And it doesn't work right now. White will just hane and can come down. And these are obviously just captured, so that's not working. But, you know, black wants to have this potential cut kept alive, because, you know, if black gets, you know, a stone here, and maybe a stone here or something, then this cut works, and obviously these seven white stones, you know, over here, they do not have any way to make two eyes if they get cut off, so something that white will have to be careful of. <clears throat> black comes down, white connects, uh, this would just, if white doesn't connect now and black cuts, then this whole group has the territory and the eyes and everything, and there's no way for white to pressure anything. So white has to connect with this really ugly, ugly shape in here. Comes over. Again, just playing some forcing moves. Uh, this is kind of neat, you know, it's like kind of indirectly preventing this cut, because white will just give up the stones on the bottom. Come out. Something like this would be really terrible, really terrible for black. Uh, white could probably even just get away with this, and now it looks like this group is going to die. So, obviously, you don't want to do something like that. Uh, black just jumps out, keeping this group access to the center, uh, you know, keeping hope of maybe pressuring these four stones by moving these three out at some point. Lots of complicated trickiness going on. All right, now that black connects here, uh, white has to cover this weakness. Now, first white forces so that black cut now, white will just capture them, but black connects again, white has to connect, and oh, this is just ugly in here, and obviously white has, you know, almost no eye shape, uh, maybe a little right here, but with this stone and this stone kind of peeping at these, uh, yeah, it's bad, uh, and black jumps out here, and, you know, white's one real hope here is essentially that, you know, yes, the A group is very weak and has no eyes, but the B group doesn't have two eyes yet either, and the C group isn't alive. So even though white is the, the weakest of the three, black has to handle two groups, which gives white a little bit of hope, I think. 
And uh, let's see how White handles this situation, because it's pretty dire. Uh, I think this is the point where the game starts to really go in Black's favor. Uh, but let's see, let's see how White handles it. Starts with the peep, gets a little bit of eye shape inside. Ane is down here, just kind of threatening to connect out, but now this threatens to just cut. So White connects, Black descends. White Hanes, and here Black has to be really, really careful, because if Black just blocks at K, White will connect at M. And the problem with M is that it threatens to cut at K2 and threatens to kill the corner. Like, White can kill the corner with another move down here. So this would not be a good way to go. So what Black has to do is just fall back directly. And this is kind of a, you know, now it's not really a big deal, because if white pushes again, black can just Atari. Uh, oh no, actually, this is, never mind. <laughs> this is still the problem. This is going to be a problem for a long time. Uh, again, black would have to connect, um, and white can kill the corner. So we're in an interesting position where white could actually just kind of push for a long ways. But this isn't getting white anything. Um, if crawling along the... Second line is bad. Crawling along the first line is even worse, particularly when you can't get anything from it. And I believe at this point, Black could just do this, because now Black's got the support here, and it's, yeah, this is this is done. So, oh, actually, White can't even Atari the, would have to come back. Oh, but then Black would have to do something over here. White could cut, but this isn't going anywhere. Black can just Atari this down and capture it. So... Uh, this could be a reducing maneuver at some point, but since it doesn't get white any eyes or potential eyes or counterattacks or anything like that, uh, this rejection is definitely, or this variation would definitely be rejected. Because basically, what white wants is to maintain the possibility of maybe descending here and connecting out underneath, uh, which could happen at some point. Uh, white plays over here. This kind of more or less resolves the situation, because now... Um, you know, black needs to descend, and that sort of threatens to make two eyes. Uh, we'll get into that in a second. First, black turns here, uh, white connects the bamboo joint, and yeah, now black lives in the corner. And essentially, if white connects here, black can do this in sente, and then play at the vital point to at least survive. And uh, granted, this makes no points uh, with the eye penalty in classical Chinese rules, but uh, the big white group seems like it has no real place to go either. So uh, white's probably not going to do that. Um, what white does instead is connects over here. Now this also threatens to kill the group, but the difference is, is that this reinforces towards the outside. So this kind of gives white a chance to maybe connect out, whereas playing back over here just kind of, it, it's in the corner, it's surrounded, it doesn't impact anything. And black has to turn in here to live now. Black can't block on the outside, unfortunately. And now white comes through like this and cuts. And the point of this is that now when white comes down, black can't block because white will play here, I believe, and just kill this. Yeah, this just kills the, uh, the black group here. So this isn't working for black. Black has to do something else. So black Ataris once connects, or white counter Ataris. Because um, if, you know, <clears throat> uh, the, the thing with the counter Atari is that if black takes here, well now this black group has no eyes, and we're either going to, white's either going to be able to kill it, or get a Seki, or, you know, something like that. So this wouldn't work either. So black instead has to connect uh, right here. And then white's able to come out underneath. So pretty slick. White manages to connect to the outside. But this group still has no eyes. So still in trouble. White comes out over here. White comes. And then this allows black to connect his own stones um, out this way. So pretty good sequence. Uh, uh, white extends once, black jumps down to prevent the eye shape. White comes here, and again, this is sente. Black has to connect. If black plays something like this to definitively limit the eyes, 
Well, when white captures here, again, we're back to the situation where this black group and this white group, prob well, actually, with the extra outside liberties over here, white might be able to capture this now. So this would be really bad, really bad for, for black. Black has to capture, and then white responds, trying to get a little bit of eye shape down on the edge of the board here. Black is going to try and deny as much as possible. And then this is pretty slick, this jump out. It's just kind of using all of the potential in the situation really effectively. Black comes from the outside to limit, you know, keep white from escaping and connecting out. And that lets white get an eye by capturing this one stone really cleanly. Super, super cleanly. Uh, black comes down to deny white another eye on the edge. White pushes out and then cuts through here. And this is pretty crazy because the thing to note now is that we have two ginormous groups, the A group and the B group, that cover basically, you know, a quarter of the board. The C group's alive, let's be clear on that. Uh, White is definitely, or black has definitely got one eye right here and definitely can get one or two eyes over here no matter what. So, uh, you know, there's not really anything to worry about there. Um, one thing to note is that it's kind of neat if, uh, if white does connect here, I can capture, oh no, black could just connect out in this case. Uh, in some circumstances where black didn't have support stones right here, white could reduce this area to just one eye uh, in Sente, but since black has room to make another eye over here, there isn't any worry of that happening. Back to the game, um, you know, black connects down here, keep, you know, this is really important now to keep white from cutting off these three black stones, so black has to keep this connected. Uh, white connects over here, which is Sente, uh, now black has to capture here, black won't get two eyes, and now white does this awesome liberty slash eye reducing maneuver uh, with this cut and throw in black Ataris and then this is cool white plays here which is really neat because now black captures white can throw back in because there's a snapback if black captures here white just captures the stones so black has to capture the one stone which means white Atari's the four, which would give white his second eye if they got captured, so black has to play here. And so white destroyed this eye potential, reduced black's liberties, all in Sente. So let's look at, uh, oh, and then white pushes once here um, to eliminate the possibility of black getting an, a second eye in here. Because notice that this eye is false here at K8. This is false. This capture is one real eye. So both groups have one real eye. Let me go... Oh, and then this is, I think, the last, this is really important because if white tanukis at this point to, you know, do something else, uh, black can play here, and having this co-liberty, um, even though white captures it first, um, basically black has so many local co-threats, like just this peep, you know, that's a co-threat because it threatens to destroy the eye uh, and can recapture. And if white does anything, like extend here, black can actually just start uh, in on the um, the capturing situation, and it's basically uh, like a no-go, essentially. Um, there's, uh, because white will have to win this co, and black will end up a step ahead and capture all of the white stones, so white has to prevent this. So uh, white has to come down here, and it was really cool after playing all these sente moves to reduce the overall, uh, you know, amount of liberties and whatnot. And then black turns and cuts over here. And it's kind of interesting, because on the one hand, um, there is, uh, black has a possibility to live here, which would be to play this Atari, and then come back like this. The problem is, is that right now, I believe white can also live by coming down like this. Does this work? Oh yeah, this works because, or does it not? Some crazy trickiness going on right here. 
can do this and come back. Can white do something similar to black? Hmm. I wonder if there's some other weird trickiness with the descent. Maybe after uh, this, something like this is working? No, that seems... seems not working. Hmm. It's got to be some kind of counterattack. Cuts. Oh, I'm sorry. This is really silly of me. Um, at this point, this uh, this maneuver is not working because white will just come here, threatening to cut off these stones. Black will have to connect, and then white connects. And basically, this is one gigantic seki. And uh, we might go into we might show that in detail at the end of the game. But for right now, once we get to this point. The groups, like, all right, this is a good point to take stock of what is going on in this game. Okay, the A group is alive. Okay, that's pretty obvious. The B and C groups are caught in a ginormous secchi where both sides has one eye. I want you to notice the, the D point here is a false eye. Uh, and if black tries to use the Atari at E, then uh, white can push it F and connect, and then white can save the stones. So... This is a giant, just, oh, enormous, enormous seki. It's pretty crazy to look at. Um, and the thing that you know that this is going to work out as a seki, almost without counting liberties, because they have so many shared internal liberties all over the place, that one side would have to have like three or four more external liberties than the other to actually capture, and that's almost impossible. The thing to note, though, especially after black cuts here, is that white needs to keep the D group, the E group, and the F group alive to maintain this seki. So even though, you know, this is a pretty, you know, when we were looking at whether or not white could save the B group, white has managed to save the B group, but at quite a cost, um, you know, Black can give up these stones, you know, at G and H, if if need be. It doesn't have to capture the white stones, because notice that white doesn't have really any territory. I mean, maybe if we assume that white's going to capture these, there's a few points here. But black has a big corner in the upper right, and it looks like it's going to be at least a decent-sized corner in the lower left. Uh, you know, even if white comes back and pushes in, black's still getting, like, ten points of territory down here, plus another three or four in the lower right, whereas white has almost nothing. And white's the one who's going to have to keep all these groups alive. Because if one of these groups dies, it's a collapse for white. Whereas if one of the black groups dies, not really a big collapse. Black has basically got this seki locked down. It's white who needs to save everything to maintain it. So with basically at this point, black has taken a good solid lead in this game. It's a little tricky, you know, to analyze, but... Uh, you know, if we could break it down into little pieces, it seems like black is doing very well at this point. White's going to Atari, and remember, white has to save all these stones, so, uh, you know, white builds up some strength over here before connecting out with the weak, weakish stones here. And, you know, these black stones aren't super strong, but, you know, black can sacrifice them. White doesn't have that luxury. White can't sacrifice these stones. White has to save them. I have black cuts, really strong move. And this is this is another really tricky sequence. Uh, because obviously these three stones are captured at the moment, but they give white some good Aji around here for handling this group of stones. Uh, white comes here. Now black sets these stones into motion. It's kind of interesting. Just the one, uh, you know, get some Aji, Aji here. Moves out with this stone, and, you know, with these stones here, like, now these two stones are really weak. And it, it, oh, it doesn't look like white's going to make a big territory at the top now. Really kind of a shame. In fact, white even comes all the way back to deal with this leftover Aji over here. A little unfortunate. Black 
makes a placement. And this is another really tricky sequence. Black peeps, white connects, comes down, connects, black cuts. Now white makes an eye right here, but black cuts, and this is, oh man, this is a great life and death problem. Um, if, you, if you feel like it, you should pause the video, set this up on your board, and uh, try and figure out if white can live in here. It's quite the spectacular situation. Black comes down, threatens to connect over on this side. White fills a liberty, black Ataris, white comes down, black comes down. White is, and, and we can see right here, this is a troubling situation, and you should be able to notice this just by glancing at the board, because the white group at A has one, two, three liberties. The black group at B has one, two, three, four liberties. Counting liberties is a really easy way to tell who has the upper hand in a situation and who needs to look for the, like, the Tsuji that solves things. And what happens here, this is pretty, pretty slick. So now white's down to two liberties, black still has three, and white can't fill here with because that would be self Atari. But white has a plan. White plays here. Now if black continues to capture the four stones, white makes a second eye right here. And this is really annoying because you know, if black ignores this move to do something somewhere else, like, you know, jump here, this would be pretty big. Or play like a 3-3 you know, three, three or something. Well, white can probably rescue these three, and now these four stones are captured. So black does not want that to happen, so black just descends, and then that allows white to get the extra move in on the capturing race and play Atari. So now white's captured the three, captured the two, that's two eyes, at least a little bit of territory. White's pretty happy, but now black comes and invades the 3-3 three, three over here. And we can just see white has almost no territory anywhere. So, uh, you know, but that's also the nature of these hard fighting games, is that like, you know, you never know, maybe white's gonna kill some big thing all of a sudden, so. <clears throat> But, you know, white doesn't, black keeps the pressure on really hard, and white's got to scramble just to live up here. White doesn't have really the strength to come out and, uh, you know, dominate in the same way. And here, black's, you know, activating all the haji, playing some really tricky moves in here. And what ends up happening is white just gets almost no territory in here. Comes out. Uh, here, you know, white activates that haji. This prevents this you know, cut from happening, which is pretty cool. Because uh, notice that, you know, if black gets the chance to do this, uh, white can't do this because it would be self-Atari. So white has to get the move in first. But this is, you know, this is why white created that Aji way at the beginning of the game, is that it reinforced this position. And now we can see that actually coming into effect. And this also has another side effect, um, because when white comes here, black actually has to answer on the inside to keep these three stones securely captured, which means that at the end of the game, this Hane is also going to be Sente, because Black's going to have to connect here. Because if Black ignores this to do, you know, something else, uh, wait, we'll do this, and we've got three liberties to two liberties, which means Black is captured. Pretty slick. So, this is really neat the way that White created and used uh, this Aji with these two stones. Very cool technique. Okay, white attaches, black hanes. We're just pretty much into small scale in game right now. Uh... Okay, white comes down. This threatens to make two eyes, so black says, uh, No, you will not make two eyes. And this is the end of the game record. Um, I It seems like they played the game all the way out, uh, but Black is winning by a lot. Um, like, probably like over like 20 points, or maybe just a little bit more. Um, just because this, cor this corner is really big, this corner is really big. Black has the other two corners, and it's like, where is White's territory? White has like six, ten points over here. A little bit in here, and that's it. 
basically. Oh, and then like another five, six, seven over here. So, you know, white just doesn't have much going right here. And you can kind of see how after this Seki came about, you know, white just had to defend all of the little groups, whereas black was able to just attack and romp through the territory. And, um, you know, if you want to see this Seki played out, um, typically um, what you want to do is uh, start... Uh, start playing from the outside. So, you know, black will play there, or white will start filling these liberties. Black will play, this forces white. Black connects. I'll play here. Uh, black will fill. And, you know, notice even though black has more external liberties, like three more, I think, because this is the last... Um, oh, no, this has, like, three more external liberties. So, you know, white fills here. Black fills here. We can go here. Uh, or actually, it might be better. White, white might have to throw in here. Black captures. White fills. Black connects. Uh, the problem is, is that this reduces Black's liberties quite a bit, because now this whole group... Oh, it's not quite an Atari yet, but the... Um, let's see. But now um, Black has to start filling, essentially, his own liberties. So... I'm going to start with, like, this one, uh, and then, you know, white can go here, that's an Atari, black goes here, and now white can go here, that's an Atari, black goes there, and now you can see we're down to just these like, internal liberties, you know, so, and each side has an I, so, I mean, if you wanted to play this all the way out, it's kind of like, there we go, um, neither side can play here. So, I mean, crazy Seki. Um, this was, you know, a really insane game. And you can see that just, you know, because of the, the slight rules change, you know, it makes, you know, your, the corner territory less valuable and central influence more valuable. And cutting your opponent into smaller groups is a really good strategy uh, with the, the eye penalty. So... Uh, but but the go in and of itself, especially in the fighting, you know, it, it follows the same flow that a modern game would. And these are obviously very high level players. Uh, just some of the Tsujis in the way that you know, like this this two white moves in the corner to create the Aji that was later used to secure the outside group was really cool. And this huge fight that ends up being a, a one-eye Seki for both sides is pretty crazy as well. But I definitely wanted to go over that. It's a little bit different from what we usually do, but uh, I think it's still really instructional. Uh, just look at different techniques, different styles, because, you know, the, a lot of this applies, you know, the, the Tsuchis haven't changed, you know. A snapback was still a snapback, you know, in the, you know, 18th century. 1700 so on. So, you know, very interesting game, and I uh, hope you enjoyed that. But uh, anyway, I will catch you next time, and thank you for watching.